Hey guys, Robert here with Fiddleback Forge. Another great Fiddleback Friday. It's been a while, but I've got awesome knives, so that makes up for it. Check them out. It's gonna be a great Fiddleback Friday. Got some knives from Andy Roy with Fiddleback Forge, of course, because it wouldn't be Fiddleback Friday without Fiddleback. And we've got Russell Reese, second week in a row for Kohata Knife Company. I'll talk a little bit about his background and his knife design features and aesthetics. We've got W.A. Searles. And of course, Amy with Warlander Enterprises. Gonna be a great Fiddleback Friday. Okay, so you may have noticed on that little teaser video right there that the reduction of Fiddleback Forge production has begun. There are fewer Fiddleback Forge knives week after week, uh, as you've noticed in the past several weeks, uh, because Andy Roy has taken on full production capabilities in-house on his own again. 100% of the Fiddleback Forge knives are now made 100% by Andy Roy's hands alone. So you're seeing an increase as well in the number of Fiddleback family knives that we are promoting. These are people that have worked at Fiddleback Forge before, former Fiddleback Forge apprentices uh, that are now renowned knife makers of their own, fantastic knife makers at that. Uh, we're bringing you more of those, but the plan is actually to bring you even more than what we've been doing, but it's a little bit hard to do under the Fiddleback Forge umbrella. So what I'm going to do is in the next couple of weeks, you'll notice a brand new website come out. Uh, not going to announce what that is quite yet, uh, but it's going to be something that I'm doing to help promote not only the Fiddleback family brands of knives, uh, but bringing on some really great knife makers that you maybe not had a chance to see yet uh, that are fantastic, many of which are right here out of Georgia, as many of the Fiddleback family are. So I look forward to showing you guys that and talking a little bit more about that as we get a little closer to launch but expect a new knife website with a lot more knife makers to come. So the videos will continue. They'll just be more dynamic with a lot more uh, variety in knife makers. Fiddleback Forge, don't worry, is not going anywhere. And I'll continue to work with Andy on those for as long as Andy wants me to work on those. So that's the, the arrangement that we have. So you'll continue to see me. You'll continue to see me promoting Fiddleback Forge and Andy Roy and working with him as well. So. Fiddleback Friday, let's get back to that. If you are not familiar with Fiddleback Friday and the knives you just saw in that teaser, all these knives release at nine o'clock Eastern Standard Time on Friday, which is tonight, unless you're catching this after the fact, which some of them may still be on the site, so go try to see if you can get them. However, if you're seeing this before 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time when they launch, make sure you're on the website, fiddlebackforge.com, before 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to get a better chance of snagging the knife that you want. The knives release promptly at 9 p.m. or within a few seconds, however the system kicks them up. Uh, but you'll want to be able to refresh that screen, snag the one that you were looking for. Now, it is not enough to put it in your shopping cart. You have to be the first person to finish the entire checkout process to make sure that knife shows up in your mailbox next week. And speaking of that, why don't I show you what they look like in hand so you know what they're going to look like when they show up in your mailbox next week. And remember, Monday's Memorial Day. We're not shipping on Monday as we normally do. We'll ship on Tuesday, but it's still plenty enough time for you to get the perfect Father's Day gift like these. Check them out. All right, so I want to start off talking about Mr. Russell Reese with Kohuta Knife Company. If you have not heard of Kohuta or Russell Reese, uh, you may have actually seen his knives last week. We posted two of his knives last week. If you think that looking at this knife, it's reminiscent of a Fiddleback Forge knife, heavily inspired would be a good way to put it. You would be correct. Russell is a former apprentice with Fiddleback Forge. And before that, he very much was a fan of Andy Roy's design aesthetic. Uh, but if you were to pass this off as a Fiddleback clone, you would definitely be missing out not only on great, great knives, uh, but some design features that Fiddleback Forge don't, doesn't necessarily have. One of those being uh, how Russell indexes a lot of his knives, especially his newer models. Uh, you index closer up to the blade. Now, don't worry, he still has a really great handle that really locks you into that indexing, so it's very confidence-inspiring. You know where the blade is at all times, but it does move you up a little bit on that. And here, I'll, let me show you what I mean by that. If you look right there, you'll notice that the line of my finger and the line of where that blade plunge is right there on that grind, you'll notice that they pretty much line up. 
Now this gets you a little bit closer to the blade in order to have a better transfer of power because this point right here is where the pivot is from the handle where you're holding it to transferring the power to the blade. So the closer you are up to that, the more power you're gonna transfer. So that's one design aesthetic there. You can see the difference on the Fiddleback 4s. This is a recluse, which I'll show you in a little bit more in detail. Uh, but you can see just how much farther back. And now it's a very slight difference. It's not huge, but it's just enough where it does affect that balance of power. But if you're a person who doesn't handle a knife every single day, doesn't use one in it day in, day out uh, for a lot of tasks, you may feel more comfortable with something with a, an indexing that's a little bit further back uh, so you're not right on top of that blade. Depends on your comfort level. So I've definitely described some of Russell's work like this one in particular as kind of a bushcraft pro kind of model. Uh, another feature that you'll notice on that is the thickness of the handles. Russell goes for a lot more thickness, a lot more of a rounded handle. And that's simply because when you're really getting down, like if you're doing feather sticking or you're doing tri sticks or you're doing any kind of bushcraft task, associated with those things uh, or any heavy bushcrafting over time you're going to get hot spots in your hand if the if the handle is more narrow so he keeps it a little bit thicker you don't get hot spots you can literally work with this knife all day uh, as long as your hands and muscles and forearms can hold up anyway um, you can work with this all day without the hot spots causing you fatigue that makes you want to put the knife down and stop doing the work so uh, that's another design feature of Russell's. Another one that you might miss if you're not really closely paying attention, and I can't even really show it to you on the camera because it's not going to show up, is the fact that he chamfers his edges right here, which a lot of pure bushcrafters say you shouldn't do because, you know, you want to be able to strike on a fire steel or whatnot. However, but you also want to be able to put your fingers up on top of the blade without the corners and the edges of the blade cutting or digging into your fingers being uncomfortable and actually causing damage to your fingers you want that to be a little bit smoothed over right there so you can really put the weight and the pressure down without causing a problem so how did he fix this problem for the bushcrafters who like to use fire steels on the backside spine of their knives well he doesn't chamfer the edges up here so you might actually, I don't think you can probably hear the difference, uh, but this is very smooth right here or smooth enough to where my finger doesn't catch on it at all. Out here, it very much will catch a fire steel, throw great sparks. So basically you would just put your thumb on the blade like that, strike down your fire steel like that. It gives you a longer throw for less energy for a better fire steel transfer of power anyway. So that's how he fixes those. So you can tell a lot of thought goes into this into Russell's design and the finish, the fit and finish of his knives. There is nobody who does this type of knife better than Russell Reese, flat out. His attention to detail is absolutely phenomenal. As you can tell, he does a really great job on picking out uh, handle materials and everything. This model in particular is called the Rogue. Handle material on here, Masur Birch. You can tell he's got that really beautiful taper tang right there, which I've shown you a couple of different ways while I've been chatting you up. Natural liners, blue pinstripes, three and three quarter inch on the blade, eight and three eighths inch overall. This is 80 CRV2 and it's one eighth thick. It actually measures out a tad thicker than that because of the mill scale, uh, but it is one eighth inch 80 CRV2. Absolutely stunning, stunning knife. And I can tell you based on this handle material, based on this model and Kohuta's reputation uh, for Russell's work, this thing is gonna go super duper fast tonight. So the next ones I promise will be shorter. I just wanted to give you a kind of a design rundown and a uh, quick overview of Kohuta and Russell's work. Uh, I'll point out some other things as we go along probably as well, but that gives you a good idea of what you're looking at and where Russell comes from. So. We'll go ahead and put that beauty, uh, let's put it right there. And I'm going to go ahead and pull this one out. Talk to you about that one in a minute, but I got Russell's next knife coming up. And this bad boy right here is simply known as the muck. So if you're familiar with the classic writer known as Ness Muck, if you're not, I encourage you to go to Wikipedia, look it up. Uh, there was a knife design way back when, over a hundred years ago, called the Ness Muck, named after a writer uh, that went by the pen name of Ness Muck. Anyway, it was a large, uh, kind of a wide blade, upswept tip, very much like this here. Um, it was meant to be a good skinning knife and a decent all-around uh, woods knife. So 
very much so in the spirit of that is this knife right here. Very good straight handled skinner. Uh, a lot of belly right there as well, but nimble enough. You could do some stuff around the campsite, no problem whatsoever. Uh, definitely meant to be more of a skinning knife. Uh, that forward indexing right there, you can see very clearly on this model as well. Very, very open handle design though, which I'm a big fan of because no matter what size hand you have, it's really gonna feel like it was made for you no matter what. And it indexes so well, you always know where you're at without much risk of going up on that blade, even as close as you might feel like you are to it. So this one right here, Desert Ironwood, doesn't get much better than that right there. There's nothing better than a good piece of Desert Ironwood, besides maybe Koa, but that's my personal opinion. Black liners, orange pinstripes, four inch blade on that bad boy, eight and seven eighths inch overall. So lots of handle room on that for big hands. But like I said, open, it's gonna feel good for small hands as well. This one's eighth inch, 8670 on the steel. You can get a really beautiful patina over time. Taper tang, and Russell is one of the best in the business at doing those taper tangs. Absolutely gorgeous, super well balanced. Like I said, fit and finish, you can't get any better. You really can't. Russell killing it, knocked it out of the park. And like I said before, remember that he also has one up on the site right now uh, that was last week. This is in uh, cross cut natural canvas. You can go check that one out. It looks like a wood grain if you're a couple feet away, but gives you all the benefits of having a super durable synthetic handle. Absolutely awesome. That was on the for last week. I didn't get a chance to do the video on that, so I wanted to show it to you. All right, let's continue with the Fiddleback family. This one right here, W.A. Searles, Mr. Alan Searles. This model is called the Oconee, and I'm a big fan of this one. Cool little EDC size knife, three finger design, as you can see there. Pinky tucks in very, very nicely behind it, and he's got some deep indexing with like a tight radius as you can see right there you don't see that very often uh, usually a lot of the indexing and radiuses are, are bigger uh, for one it's kind of harder to do a small radius right there uh, but i really like this one in combination with that finger guard it really gives you a place to really dig in your pressure on your grip uh, to keep from running up on that blade but it's just kind of a cool design and cool look to it as well the pommel locks in really really nicely as well so really cool design very confidence inspiring for an edc very comfortable three inch blade, six and three quarters inch overall. So it's a really, really great size for a pocket sheath. Eighth inch A2 steel taper tang, as you can see right there. And I can't say enough about my Sir Birch. I showed you a piece on Russell's uh, this just a minute ago. And look at that curl on that side, the way that grain shows through. That is a beautiful, beautiful piece of my Sir Birch right there. Really cool model, WA Searles, Oconee. Grab that, snatch that up, gonna be a great one. And next up in the Fiddleback family lineup, Mr. Amy, Warlander Enterprises, killing it. As usual, this is the Muskrat model. I'm a big fan of this model. Great little EDC, but I can get full four fingers on it, which is nice for me. Um, I really like that size, very uh, Hiking Buddy-esque in size. Uh, seven and one eighths inch overall, three inch blade, uh, but that's where the similarities pretty much end on that because it feels a lot different than the hiking buddy i regularly have in my pocket from fiddleback forge burnt orange on the bolsters burnt orange micarta one of my favorites for sure and tossing it up with that osage right here on the back that's pro level right there pro level choice natural liners black pinstripes nobody makes a knife quite as appealing and sexy as amy does that's a fact 330 seconds 8670 steel with a sunburst pattern on the flats. Really cool knife. And here's that Billy Hayes moment, Billy Mays Hayes moment, however you say his name, rest in peace. But wait, there's more. Amy is also a fantastic sheath maker, as you can see right here. Nice basket weave on this one. The sheath does come with her knives because she makes both and makes them both to fit. So that is Miss Amy, Warlander Enterprises with the muskrat and matching sheath. All right, next up from Amy, if you're wondering why I'm holding this knife super weird, it is because the bolster on this thing is so shiny, like a new Porsche, uh, that as soon as I touch it, because my hands have a little bit of oil on them from the blades, it's gonna leave fingerprints. And I wanted to show you without the fingerprints, how freaking perfect 
Amy makes everything she touches. This is the Grizzly model, uh, black paper micarta on the bolsters. And with the shine, I can actually barely even make the camera focus on it correctly because it's so shiny, it's hard for it to pick up. So now I'm gonna actually hold it correctly now that you've seen how shiny it is and you'll forgive my fingerprints. This model is absolutely awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Two thumb ramps on here, one back here on the handle, one up on the blade so you can really get some pressure down on it. She's got the really sexy swedge on here which also reduces a little bit of drag when you're cutting anywhere near the tip. Absolutely stunning knife, as you can see. Uh, black paper by micarta on the bolsters, like I said. Chechen wood on the pommels. Gorgeous, 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 gorgeous. The steel that she used on this one uh, is 5 30 seconds, 8670. Skeletonized full tang on that bad boy. Four and a half inch on the blade. Absolutely awesome. Nine and a quarter inch overall. Can't say enough about Amy's knives and her craftsmanship and her work, as you can see there. Her attention to detail is just absolutely unreal. One of the best knife makers out there, in my opinion. Amy with Warlander Enterprises. Oh yeah, here's the uh, butt weight, butt more moment. Butt weight, there's more, but yep. And here you go. Awesome belt sheath, made to match, made to fit perfectly from Amy. Warlander Enterprises, The Grizzly, fingerprints sold separately. And a quick honorable mention to another Fiddleback family member, this Joey Berry JB Knife Works. This is a kitchen set that's already on the website. I haven't had a chance to put these in any videos yet and definitely wanted to because they are amazing, as is everything Joey does. 440C stainless kitchen set, American Gyo 2 right here on the top. Absolutely awesome. And a paring knife that match in desert ironwood, black liners, sorry, natural liners, orange pinstripes. Go check those out on the site if that looks like the perfect Father's Day present for the dad in your life, then uh, I would suggest you jump right on that because that set is friggin' awesome before I have to keep it. So there you go. Joey, miss you, buddy. I'm getting ready for the Blade Show, so he didn't have a chance to get us a knife, but that's the ones from last week. And of course, it wouldn't be Fiddleback Friday without, well, uh, Fiddleback. So here you go. I'm gonna start out with the Garote, which is one of Andy's favorite models that he's designed, actually. He's really a big fan of the fighting knives, although most of his knives fall under the outdoor and bushcraft scene. Uh, he really loves this one. So Garote, or Garot, I've also seen it pronounced. It is pronounced correctly both ways so you can go check that out if you don't believe me desert iron wood on the pommels right there beautiful mosaic pen thick natural liners on that bad boy antique linen on the bolsters gorgeous just a really super sexy stabby knife right there very very open handle design obviously super good indexing right there for any kind of uh, forward uh, jabbing motions you may have to make when using this knife. Four inch blade, eight and a half inches overall, eighth inch A2 on the steel, skeletonized full tang, gorgeous, 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 gorgeous. And just a reminder, since Andy has cut production back, all Fiddleback Forge knives are 100% Andy Roy made. Next up from Fiddleback Forge, Mr. Andy Roy, knocking it out with a classic looking Osage model in the full finger. Now, one thing I like about putting this particular piece of Osage on a full finger is a full finger got its name because the handle is so full figured and wide. And what better way to showcase a beautiful piece of Osage than a big open handle design. Now the finger part comes from the fact that the blade is very reminiscent of a bush finger in shape, although it is a shorter blade, slightly different in shape, uh, but very reminiscent indeed. The full finger is really, really open on the handle design, so it's comfortable just no matter how you're holding it, but it's indexed super well right here, so you always know where it is without having to look at it in your hand, which is obviously a safety factor to help you from getting cut when you're doing stuff with it. So Osage, natural liners and pins, white pinstripes, taper tang. I love how Osage finishes out on the pommel too. looks really great. Three and five eighths inch on the blade, eight and a quarter inch overall. Love the full finger. That's a great knife model right there. 
that is the Fiddleback Forge full finger. And next up is a more classic design from Fiddleback Forge. This is the Recluse. Now you may know the Fiddleback Forge logo is a spider, more specifically a brown recluse spider, uh, commonly referred to in slang as a Fiddleback. There you go, a little bit of background. So this is the recluse model. So this is kind of the namesake of the company, really, if you kind of look at it in a backwards kind of way. Uh, but the Recluse has four inch blade, eight and a half inch overall. It's very much uh, like a Leoku in shape, a little smaller, whereas the Leoku has a five inch blade, the Recluse is four inch blade. Cobalt, curly, ash. Yeah, don't get much better than color right there. That's absolutely stunning. Black liners, white pinstripes, eighth inch, 8670 on the steel. Nice taper tang. Andy Roy continues to kill it. That is the recluse. Last, but certainly not least, I mentioned the Heike Buddy previously, which is uh, one of my favorite Fiddleback Forge models. I carry one, have multiple. Uh, it's a favorite of mine and favorite of a lot of people for a lot of good reasons. And uh, one is it's just freaking comfortable. It's a really great feeling handle. It's large enough to do probably 95% of what you would want to do most of the time, even on hiking trips, obviously by the name. Uh, camp trips and that whatnot, but it's a it's a great EDC size knife, which is really what sets it off. I wear mine in a pocket sheath in my pocket. Uh, it's a great size for that for me. Uh, Fire Dog Micarta is one of Andy's favorite Micartas from Pops Knife Supply. Black liners, yellow on the pinstripes, really make that red set off. Taper tang on that bad boy, of course. This is going to make somebody a fantastic daily carry knife. Awesome, especially if you're out in the woods, the colors right there make it easy to find if you happen to drop it, uh, which is a big plus as well. Three and, a quarter, three and a quarter inch on the blade, seven and a quarter inch overall. Doesn't get much better than a hiking buddy in your pocket or on a belt sheath on the trail. That wraps up Fiddleback Friday for this week. I'm Robert with Fiddleback Forge. Life's too short to carry an ugly knife. Get yourself a Fiddleback or one of the Fiddleback family.